What's going on, everyone? Welcome to What's New Tagu. I'm Chris Tagu with Alpine. We're here to talk about what's new. We have something super exciting for you today. That's right, it's back. Alpine F number one status is back. Where's Steve Brad? We need a demo car. I've been waiting for this moment my entire career. Oh, you didn't know what Alpine F number one status is? Well, that's okay. Let me give you guys a quick rundown on what all the fuss is with this legendary product line and show you what's up with the third generation of Alpine F number one status. Adjust the bass and let the Alpine blast. Man, you gotta love 90s hip hop. Ice Cube, Will Smith, Eazy-E. You know what they all had in common? They all mentioned Alpine in one of their songs. They're probably referencing this holy grail of radios. Alpine's history of amazing radios soaked into pop culture in the early 90s, and for good reason. If you wanted to experience the best sound in your car, Alpine was the head unit you had to have. Now this radio's price point was up there back in the day, which is probably why these rap stars were the ones rocking them. This 7909 is still considered one of the best CD players ever made, and it retailed for $1,000 in 1989 money, which is probably equivalent to what? $2,100 in 2021 money for a CD player? That radio was definitely not built for the everyday car audio enthusiast, but it served as a foundation for performance and more affordable products for years to come. So fast forward to the late 90s, Alpine took this idea and ran with it. Build the absolute best sounding system possible and use what they learned to improve all of their products. We call it the trickle down effect. Alpine F number one status drew inspiration from pro racing circuits where automotive brands use their best components and technology build the ultimate racing machines. Now, obviously, successful racing brands like Honda or Toyota aren't focused on selling high-performance race cars, but they use a program to continually push their engineering to the next level, which in effect improves all of their products. That's what Alpine FM1 status was to us, a way to build the best to improve the rest. So the first generation of Alpine F number one status circa 2001 was designed with a single goal in mind, create the best car audio system possible using the most important medium at the time. Every component in that system was engineered from the ground up. The CDA 7990 CD player itself, the PXA H700 processor, all the amps and speakers, all designed with the best components available at the time to get the job done. We worried less about the costs and unrelated features and focused on the one goal of perfecting CD reproduction. And they achieved it with the CDA 7990 and the rest of the F number one gang. So what was after CDs? In 2004, Alpine decided to take a stand on the digital media format war raging in home theater by adopting DVD audio for the next generation of F number one status. Don't remember DVD audio? That's okay because it went completely extinct about three years later. Anyways, DVD discs were thought to be the future of music media, especially for home audio enthusiasts. DVDs could store up to six times the amount of data than a standard CD could, which meant you could store higher quality music on a physically identical disc. Along with its larger storage capabilities, DVD audio could record and play back music in 5.1 Dolby Digital surround sound and reach sampling rates of up to four to five times what a CD could. We'll talk more about sampling rates in a minute. Alpine wanted to take that next level music experience originally designed for the home audio world and bring that into the car. They achieved it with the DVI 9990 and that awesome motorized screen for watching DVD. Remember those? And that brings us 17 years later to the next generation of Alpine F number one status. And this time we've got our eyes on the future of recorded music, high resolution audio. High resolution audio is a high-end spec for digitally recorded music. Basically, all music intended to be distributed in some way is recorded digitally. That's how you're able to listen to it using your favorite streaming services or even on a CD. The way it works is when an artist is in the studio performing, the producer or engineer uses a mic to capture thousands of tiny samples of that sound per second. These samples are basically tones that are milliseconds in length, but when combined and played together at the right moment in time, you get a representation of what that music actually sounded like in the studio. The number of samples being captured per second is what they call sampling rate, while the number of bits used to describe that tone is called bit depth. Essentially, the more samples and bit depth you get, the closer you are to the real performance. Now, the long-standing benchmark for great quality sound has been CDs. Basically, store-bought CDs are recorded at 44.1 kilohertz at 16-bit. That's 44,100 samples described with 16 ones and zeros per second. We all know CD quality is pretty good, but as you can see, 
because there is an uncaptured space between each sample, the representative curve is slightly different from the original. High resolution describes any recording that is captured at a sampling rate higher than 44.1 kHz at 16-bit. The most common today is 192 kHz at 24-bit. As you can see in the chart, we're getting six times the amount of data volume to represent the original performance, so the gaps between samples is becoming much smaller. The third generation of Alpine F number one status is capable of reading and playing back music recorded at a whopping 384 kHz at 32 bit, which is basically as close to the live performance as you can get. Now, just a note, not all music is available at this level of recording quality, but the library is rapidly growing, and with Apple Music's recent lossless announcement and other streaming audio companies following suit, high resolution audio is soon to be the new benchmark of music. Now, in order to perform at this level, each component in the system had to be engineered to handle extremely high bitrate files in the harsh environment of a vehicle. We needed a source and a method to get these ultra high res audio files into the car, so we knew we needed a digital audio player or a DAP. Now, we're not a DAP developer, so we paired up with our friends at Astel and Kern to bring a custom version of their flagship portable digital audio player. We call it the DAP-7909. This ultra premium player has a dual DAC, one for the left and one for the right, and has an octa-core processor. It has 128 gigabytes of built-in memory and is expandable up to 400 gigs with a micro SD card. That's roughly 780 FLAC files in 192.24 format with just the built-in memory. The player is compatible with a ton of audio formats, WAV, FLAC, ALAC, MP3, AAC, DSD, OGG, yeah, you know me. There's a few more, but you get what I'm saying. Now that's a self-contained audio player. So if you have a good set of headphones, you can listen to it on its own. But when you bring it into the car, that's when all the Alpine magic happens. You can connect it to the retro design Alpine head unit, the HDS 7909 via USB. Talk about old school Alpine vibes. The head unit allows control of all your media on that DAP. The content is then sent digitally via custom A2B data bus to the HDS H900 DSP, or digital sound processor. Now the reason we're using A2B is that it's capable of supporting sampling rates at 384 kHz at 32 bit, unlike Toslink or Optical, which tops out at 96. Now the processor is really the workhorse of this system. Now there are a lot of obstacles to getting off the shelf great sound in the car. For example, listening position. You're not in the middle of the car, so sound doesn't arrive at your head at the same time. There's also a ton of random materials in the cockpit of a car, like leather, glass, plastic. All of these things cause all sorts of sound reflections, giving you peaks or valleys in the sound that don't belong there. Temperature is also a huge factor. Your car can experience massive swings in temperature throughout the day. This H900's 1 GHz processor not only gives the installer or tuner eight times the adjustability of other DSPs, but also houses an industry-first master clock management system, which is comprised of a high-performance crystal clock housed in an oven-controlled case at the center of this DSP. What? Timing is critical when aligning 384,000 samples. So all components reference this single clock, allowing ultra high-res playback without any jitter or clocking error that can be common with big temperature swings and several independent components, as you might find in the case of the vehicle. Once the files are decoded and processed, the signal is sent to the amplifiers not by traditional RCA cables, but pro-audio balanced XLRs. This allows a full eight volts of signal to be sent with virtually no noise. The system includes two ultra blue class D four channel amplifiers rated at 100 watt by four or 200 watt by two at four ohm. The HDZ 9000 four way speaker system is comprised of a three way pair of speakers, a one inch tweeter, a two and a half inch mid range and a six and a half inch mid base along with a subwoofer. No rear speakers here, true stereo imaging. Another sub can be added to the system if more bass is needed, and let's face it, for me, there's always more bass needed. The speakers are loaded with proprietary Alpine technologies like DD Linear, DD Drive, and Dual Emission, but the standout feature is each of the components from the tweeter all the way to the subwoofer utilize the exact same cone material, carbon fiber reinforced plastics. This ensures the same timber across the entire frequency range, another first of its kind for the automotive world. Now, if you were paying attention, you may have noticed that most of the signal path had to use proprietary connectivity like XLR cables and A2B, which means that the system is all-inclusive. So contrary to its predecessors, there are no plans to make the individual components of the system available all apart. 
And that's actually a benefit to the system design. When you buy a universal product or a product built to work with a multitude of products, inevitably there are features or specs included that contribute to the cost and impact the sound quality of the product. You'll probably never need to use them. The F number one status DSP doesn't have to have 12 or 16 channels because, well, it only needs to manage the seven speakers that it comes with in the box. The amplifiers don't need high level inputs because they're always going to be connected to that DSP every time. All of those extra dials, switches, and universal conveniences add tiny amounts of noise and inefficiencies to the amplifier. And the Alpine F number one status amps have only what they need. The head unit is so focused on the high res audio playback that it doesn't even have a traditional AM FM tuner. Of course, the DSP has a traditional stereo RCA input and up to six channels of high level input. So if you want to retain conveniences like CarPlay, Android Auto, or Bluetooth from an OEM or aftermarket head unit, like a Halo 9, that's possible. Essentially, you're adding a super high res audio player along with everything after to the head unit of your choice, be it aftermarket or OEM. And of course, a system designed to play audio at that level inevitably makes everything sound better. So there you go, there's a quick-ish overview of the new Gen 3 Alpine F number one status system. I don't know about you guys, but I'm super excited to hear this thing. Let me know what you guys think about the latest iteration in the comments. We'll be following up with more videos and possibly an interview with the famous yet elusive Steve Brown to talk about the system in detail and what it means for the future of Alpine products. Remember, trickle down. Thanks for watching. Alpine Degu signing off. Stay tuned next time for what's next.